So today let's let's go over the wonderful world of Call of Duty prior to the digital world. And you know what? I, that's actually not 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 even fair because you could get the old Call of Duty stuff. Um, essentially, this is about prestige packs, right? Prestige and hard editions. I saw I got this idea from T Dog Schmitty on TikTok, right? So I saw a video of his, which I'll show you guys in a minute. And he kind of goes over all the stuff that you used to get from these prestige packs or from the hardened edition packs, which were above the actual game. So like you, you would spend, let's say like $90 on the hardened pack, or you'd spend like 125 on the prestige pack and you'd get something cool such as a juggernaut fridge or an RC car or whatever. So this podcast is, um, to remind call of duty. If they, if anyone ever watches it, uh, especially from Activision, that you guys should be bringing this stuff back, right? I personally never bought that stuff because I think I was too young to really understand the value in this stuff. So I I was um, I was probably, I mean, Black, Black Ops 3 era, um, even tw- one, one for 2019, I was 27. Um, I was um, but I was not, I was not going to get the glad, the goggles. I don't really care about that stuff. Like, you know, when, when I was younger, I didn't really have that much money. Like my parents were like, you know, we, we were, you know, we were not rich, but you know, we were, I, I was not able to go out and be like, Hey mom, can I go buy the prestige edition of call of duty? Like, you know what I mean? So, and, and when, when I was working, I also valued it. I, I was working at a restaurant that was, you know, I valued every dollar that, that I made. So, so essentially Thank you so very much for tuning into this episode of the Level Up Gaming Brief podcast. If you have already watched this far, please like the video. It does help support it. I did want to take this time to give you guys a quick message. I am trying to get more and more people on here so that we can actually do some gaming I- interviews and talk about real stuff and gaming and actually make a real difference. Because the more people that watch this, the more likes we get, the more comments, the more subscribers we get. The, the farther we can actually make this podcast go and the bigger the guests get the more reach we'll be able to get. So I'm trying to be the voice for you guys. I have my own opinions, but if you guys have other opinions about call of duty and whatever else, I want to listen to those things in, in the comments and I want to make a real change. So we need to, we need the voices of everyone. We need the people on this podcast to be able to make a real difference. So liking the video, making comments, subscribing, sharing with, with your friends, that all does help that. It brings us to a whole new level. It gets our guests e- even bigger, so we can even get partners at you know Activision, at Call of Duty, or whatever. We can get Tim the Tatman. We can get Cloaksu. We can get Nick Merckx. We can get Dream. We we get we get anyone that we really want. Once this podcast actually hits a certain point, what and the bigger the guests get, the more voice that we get. So that's the most important thing. Thank you very much, and please enjoy the rest of the podcast. I wasn't really, I didn't have the luxury to go out and go spend, you know, $120, $140 on the Prestige Edition or whatever, even the Hard Edition. I usually just bought the game and I played it. Um, So I I, I guess that's, that is pretty much the whole truth. But I, now looking back, I kind of wish that I got the Juggernaut Fridge because the Juggernaut Fridge looked really awesome. That was one of the coolest things I think that they've ever done. Like the the drone was cool. The RC car was cool, but you have to be kind of into that stuff. I would love to have like a juggernaut fridge, like let's say, you know, right here or something like that. Or even, you know, we'll go to this one. Maybe, maybe we like over in this corner. I, I, I don't know exactly the scale of what it was, but um, imagine if I had a juggernaut fridge in, you know, in my set here. You know what I mean? That would, be, that would have been pr- pretty cool. Or the RC car or the drone or, wh- or you know, the goggles or whatever. You know what I mean? So, well, I'll show you the video in just a second so you can kind of see exactly. He kind of goes over all the stuff, but I'm just kind of na- naming things randomly. But <coughs> I I don't think that I actually valued those prestige edition I- items or hardened edition items as much as I do now. Even though I never actually bought it, I would definitely go out maybe and buy a prestige edition now if it had something really cool in it. Like... A juggernaut fridge would, would, would have been cool. What What's something that we... Or, you know what they could have done, <clears throat> or, or, or what they could do, is they could do a random fridge. Like, they could have a limited edition of 
like a sleight of hand, a juggernaut, a, um, you know, like the da Deadshot Daiquiri, Marathon, like stuff like that. And people could have gotten them randomly. That would, that would be cool to do in like this new one because you, you want to know why? Because people would have been really excited to get something different, but it also would have been worth money in the future. Like somebody may want to collect all of these things. So it's like somebody might be willing to pay you like a hundred thousand dollars for a fridge that had that's your sleight of hand fridge or your quick revive fridge or all of the above. So like if you ended up buying like five prestige packs and you got all and you got all different ones, which you probably wouldn't have, but if you you know if you got all of the different ones, you you had a full set, you might be able to sell that set for like a million dollars in like the next fifty years or something like that, or even less. You know, you know what I mean? Because that's that's like a collectible I item having like a juggernaut fridge. Like those might be worth you know few thousand dollars in, in the future i'm 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 saying a hundred thousand dollars is like just a number but it could be worth more it could be worth less so just to keep that in mind like these these prestige edition items could be really awesome like the like the fully functioning night vision goggles that was awesome that was so cool so you would have been able to to completely do that and and you would those might even be worth a few thousand dollars because somebody might want it like i'm pretty sure one of the call of duty jeeps sold for like 80 grand when it was only worth like 30 like a normal jeep is worth like thirty five thousand dollars after it had like a hundred like you know i don't know 20 20,000 miles on it but like now like that that call of duty jeep was worth like 80 grand or 100 grand or whatever so it's like it's about the market decides that kind of stuff it's almost like having an nft but like a real a a nft that they gave you to like use and have forever um, so this, this is just something to think about, but let's, uh, let's, let's, let's kind of dive into this, uh, this, this real, this video here real quick, just to take a look at it. <laughs> if you're a longtime Call of Duty fan, you probably remember the excitement of getting a physical copy of the game on launch day. But let me take it one step further. Remember how cool the pre-order bonuses used to be for the higher tier editions of the new game? I just remember being so excited for them to reveal what item would come with the prestige edition or the hardened edition. Let me just name a few. The OG MW2 came with the game and a fully functioning pair of night vision goggles. Like, are you kidding me? Black Ops 1 came with an RC car, which was literally a kill streak in the game. For modern Modern Warfare 3, they actually made a 360 that was themed around Modern Warfare. Did I trade in my old Xbox to get this? You better believe it. Black Ops 2, you got a fully functioning remote control dragon fire drone. My personal favorite was in Black Ops 3, it was a mini fridge that was themed around... Just to be clear, that drone didn't actually fire any bullets, just FYI. No! the zombies perk juggernaut black ops 4 then stepped up the game even more with the zombies mystery box and modern warfare 19 brought back those original night vision goggles if we compare them to the last three cods we've gotten cod points and operator skins plus honestly most people buy digital now if they brought these cool items back i'd leave digital in the dust did you have any of these items if you're a so so here's the so here's the here's the uh the real talk about that right so Let's 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 take a step back, right? That mystery box, that zombies mystery box was cool, right? That was awesome. That was a cool item that again could be worth a lot of money in the future if you ended up get get getting it cuz I mean, there's only a certain amount in in the world, right? Cuz only a certain amount of people bought the prestige edition or the hard edition, right? So that that's actually really awesome to have an item like that. Not only again if you're a YouTuber or if you're some kind of content creator, you uh, you know, you you, you, you create your set with it or whatever. Um, but those, see, after 20, Modern Warfare 2019, they kind of started to just not really care that much anymore, it looked like. Um, they stopped caring, honestly, I think, probably before that. But no, notice how a lot, a, lot, a lot of those cool items were, were Black Ops, right? Like, you know, the Mystery Box, the drones, the RC car. Modern Warfare just, like here's two goggles you know what i mean like <laughs> you know it's like that's the kind of thing i'm talking about is uh, treyarch seemed to care a lot more about those prestige edition I, I items than than um you know than call of duty did so uh sorry then then uh then sledgehammer did our uh infinity ward who, whoever was doing that at the time so that's something to keep in mind right so you're so you're seeing this all for like the first time if you are noticing that these prestige packs were actually out there and I can tell you right, right, right now, the Modern Warfare series didn't really care about that stuff as much as making it a good game, which, you know, that could be ar ar argued where, you know, Black Ops didn't really care about making a good game. They cared about making, you know, these items to get people to buy the stuff. 
to, to buy, actually buy the game to get to get to get the collector I, I, I items and i think modern warfare probably didn't need that i i like the modern warfare games better just in general because of the graphics the gameplay was always smoother versus the black ops games but <clears throat> the prestige edition stuff is cool it's stu it's 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 a collector's item for people that cared and i think i i kind of agree with t with t dog at this point it's you know i probably i i would I would want to spend my money on something that would be really worth my time. Like, again, the Juggernaut thing would definitely be cool. The Mystery Box thing would definitely be cool. Because then I could, like, you know, make my set with it, essentially. And I would probably spend $120 on, on it. I, my wife wouldn't approve of it. But I, I would definitely want to, you know, I would definitely want to do that. Right? So I, 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 I would want to create my own environment with the stuff that, that, that they give us. Because... I love Call of Duty. I've always loved Call of Duty. I don't. I talk shit about them, but it's because they've gone so down into the dirt. Just take Modern Warfare 2019 as an example. They just redid the goggles that, that they gave us in Modern Warfare 2. That's all they did. So there was no thought put into that. That's that's my biggest issue here is that there was no thought put 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 into that. And when there's no thought put into it, it just makes it makes it feel like it's just a cash grab. So Black Ops, they did a lot of stuff that put a lot of uh, thought into these prestige items or into these hardened edition I items, and that that was what really mattered, right? And zombies was their biggest thing. So a lot of that stuff was zombies. Uh, not a lot of it. Two, 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 two or three I items were zombies or oriented, right? Um, but at the end of the day, it's like now I think just Activision as a company doing not doing this stuff is showing us how much you don't care, like. The Warzone stuff that's that's got issues, you know the the code issues, the hacking problems. Just like if there's a broken gun, guess 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 what we're putting in the store. You know that's the kind of stuff that I know they don't care anymore. They just want the money. And this is just another example of this of this whole thing where they used to do these prestige items, but now it's like they don't care. They're just giving us skins, cod points, or whatever else. But it could also be an older generation thing. Maybe their last prestige edition item didn't do as well as their first one or their second one, which is very well possible. So there might be numbers behind that that we don't know about. But for the people that enjoyed them, they should still be doing something that could definitely boost their numbers. I mean, again, there are some younger generation kids like Gen Zers now are starting to become a little bit more independent and starting to have their own jobs. Like they could be, they could be enjoying these prestige items too. They don't know that. They probably just hit one stat and then somebody in the in the in the Oval Office there, Oval Office, and you know the the office upstairs is like, oh yeah, we're not making enough money off this. Let's stop doing it altogether. But it's but it. It is it it adds a flair to the game and not only to to the game but to your brand where you know it's getting to the point where you're not going they're they're not going to be too big to fail. <clears throat> they may become stagnant, but I don't think they'll like completely go bank bankrupt because they are pretty they are a pretty large comp company, but at the end of the day, this stuff the weapon skins, all the glitches, like we need to, we need a change. We need, I always say this, I've been saying this, I've been bitching about this for I don't know how many podcast episodes now. Call of Duty needs to figure out where its roots are again and then go back to that because that is where we had the the innovation, we had the creativity, we, 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 we had games that actually made a difference in our lives. It wasn't just like another cash grab or something that's free that, that anyone can, can download and play. Personally, I think that um, they need to go back to, you know, their, I want to say roots, but that's not really the correct thing. I, I just, I think they need to go back to the create their creativity phase. And if that means this, this C class just has no fucking say in it in anything, I would be okay with that where the developers and the designers take over and they start making things that actually will produce the company money up front. It may not produce money, which is, which is, that's called an investment. I don't know if everyone at call of duty knows that. That, that, that are that are in the executive C class but things that don't make money up front are, are called investments that's what they're called they, that's what it is you put money in and later on long term you expect to get m money out so I, I can assure you that if you go back to prestiged items and you go back to juggernauts uh, fridges and you go back to mystery boxes and you do something creative with what you have 
like having maybe like a lifetime action figure since they're doing this the the boys collab have a lifetime action figure set of all the people that you put in the game as as the prestige edition or something of like your next game or even of warzone you know give people something that they can actually physically touch versus just having things online because now we're getting into the point where warzone one stuff all the skins all the stuff that people spent money on that's all going to be gone and I saw this coming. I said this in, a, in, in another po- podcast. I saw this coming. This this was going to happen no matter what. Because they're not just always going to go and just add on to, to, to the new game. I think what they did is they, they, they added on to the new game or to the war zone with, you know, Cold War and Vanguard because they, they wanted to give people the illusion of like, yes, spend money, spend money, spend money, spend money. And then they started doing the Microsoft acquisition. So then now it's not their problem anymore. If, if the Microsoft acquisition actually goes through. So my point is that they deceived a lot of people and I knew it was coming. And I said it a few different times in a few different shorts, a few different long form vi- vi- videos, and nobody really believed me. But at the end of the day, I knew it was coming. And the problem with that is that now it's like a lot of people are going to feel cheated. A lot of people are going to feel cheated. Like, I didn't spend any money, as I said, on Warzone because I knew this was going to happen. I'm, I even spent any money on Warzone 2 I, either. I, I I don't plan on it. I I I earn my shit. That, I'm, I'm the original gamer of earning my stuff. I will never be buying stuff, like, online. Unless I have free COD points that I got from, like, a season pass, which is what I used to buy stuff. I think I bought, like, a skin or two with it. But I played to earn those things. I'm a play-to-earn person. I am not... Hit, you know, go get my credit card and go start buying stuff. Yes, it does support the game. I get that. But it's like when the game is just not supporting me and supporting my endeavors, why the hell would, would, would I care about it? Why why would I support it? And it's like I see all these content creators. I see I see all these content creators always bitching about how um, I see all these content creators bitching about how this game sucks. It's not fun. Yada, yada, yada. And It's like, well, then stop spending money on it. Stop supporting it. Because if you support it, then it's just, they're just going to keep doing what, what, what they've been doing for the past months, few, few months to, to a year. And that's, that's the issue that we run into here. Like people don't, they don't care. They just, they just think that by bitching out loud, it's going to, it's going to do something. But like, you actually have to take the action to make that change. So personally, I don't, I don't want to buy Call of Duty one because of the whole Nick thing. But also because um, of the just all the all the signs that they've been give, giving us just haven't been good. I did see a video yesterday. I I, I think of of um, the ability to play all the all the old Call of Duties somehow. Call uh, Activision is doing something about this where you can like do it on like a season pass or whatever. You're gonna be able to play all the old Call of Duties. F- f- like I, I don't I don't I don't know if you have to spend m- money on it. But you're going to be able to play all the Call of Duties without being hacked or having any issues. So if that's that's good, that that's the good first step. Now let's work on stopping you know these stupid packs being created, you know after um after something is broken on you know in the next YouTube video you see like oh this like I just saw the uh, uh, a new shotgun a new uh, fully automatic shotgun it only has 15 rounds in it but still it's overpowered it takes like three three or four shots from. 10, 15 meters away to kill somebody with like full three, three full plates. So it's like, that's the issue here. Like that's the problem. That's the stuff that we want fixed, but they're going to probably put out a skin for it. We need to stop that. That has to stop. Okay. Prestige packs, I think do need to come back to give the edge that, that these guys had. And you know, if battlefield even did this stuff, Battlefield could, could do some pretty awesome things. Like they have, they have the rights. I don't know if they have the rights, but they, they have the, um, the ability ba- battlefield does to make all these different cool like russian korean american tanks make a small like rc car that's like a tank do do that like make something like do something that's <coughs> that's cool because i i've still been thinking about that um not really thinking about it hard but i've been experimenting and thinking in my head of like Battlefield, I, I I got this comment of Battlefield being dead and Call of Duty is 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 is, its, is on its way, and Battlefield's made a lot of bad decisions. Like Battlefield One was a good game, but then Battlefield Five was terrible. 
Like, it was just not good. I mean, I played it a lot, and it was, was not very good. Like, it it felt too wonky. It just, the controls didn't feel good. Um, I thought Battlefield 4 was great, but then ba Battlefield 1 came, came, came out, and I was like, what the, what the hell are they doing? And then, I, like, the tanks were obviously wonky, but, you know, it was good. It felt fun. Like, and then Battlefield 20, 2042 came, came out, and it was good at first, but there was a lot of bugs, a lot of problems, which is, that's another thing too, is the bugs on, on day one launch, like, Call of Duty has this problem too, bugs on day one launch are just annoying as shit, dude, they gotta stop doing that, like, they gotta stop doing day one bug issues, like, I get it, I get it, I'm probably gonna release my game with some bugs in it, because I can't find everything, but it's like, I, I also don't have a team of, like, probably 20 to 50 people that are testing the game, you know what I mean? Like they need to either these companies need need to either fig, fig, figure out a better way to launch games and do bug fixes prior to the game launch in a more organized fashion, or they just need to stop and just d delay the launch like a week or two or three or four. And like that's the problem is like they have these hard deadlines, and I and I think that it's just like the testers may not have enough time to test the games properly, which is causing all these bugs and problems. So the developers don't get the chance to actually change the, you know, change the game. And this is just, this is me assuming, but at the end of the day, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to really, cause I love these games so much, but it's just so hard to sit here and watch them make mistakes over and over and over again. But it's also hard to watch the community do, do the same thing. Because the community sits here and complains. Oh, why isn't this working? This isn't working. The next Call of Duty be better. No, it won't. Unless we stop buying it, they will not make a real change. Because what they do is they just, they build like predetermined trailers or walkthroughs or whatever and then they give uh these sponsors or these influencers like access to the game or early access and then they find glitches but yet i feel like on day one launch those glitches aren't fixed even though they they've given like tim and tapman five weeks ahead of launch a you know like a, like an early access game pass and you're like how, why hasn't this been fixed yet? And again, I'm not trying to blame the developers. I'm not trying to blame the designers or the testers. I'm trying. To, I'm blaming these guys up top. We all know it's we all we all know it's them. We all know it's the guys up top. It's always the people that that are in the the fucking the crown chairs or the, or, the, or the high the, the the high horse chairs that are always making these decisions. Like ah, it'll be fine. But it's a lot harder to fix a game when it's out to 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 the public. When everybody's you, when everybody's exposing it, using it, and abusing it, you know. And the, you know, I know the one other thing that I wanted to talk about too. The one other thing that I really thought about, actually, just just a second ago, was the leaderboards. That was one other thing too. It's like the leaderboards are like a given with Call of Duty. Like they they released with that, but Modern Warfare 2 2022 didn't come out with that. There's no leaderboards. There's no way to track your stuff. I don't know if I haven't played it in such a long time at this point where I don't even know if, if the leaderboards would have tracked for people's original scores and stuff like that, but there was no leaderboards. That's like every call of duty has that. Like every call of duty has that out of the box, out, out, of, out of the box. How, how, how do you, how do you not include that in your game when, when it, when it first starts leaderboards are the most important thing. It's crazy. So, like, there's just a line of things that they have to really start working on. Like, they have to just make make this list of, of changes, and then they just have to go through it one by one and really just get the nitty-gritty done. And then maybe people will actually want to come back to the game and actually care about, you know, where, where it goes and how it stands and whatever else. But that's that's the problem here. Uh, what, what are we looking at at time? Oh, we're looking pretty, pretty good on time. Um, I don't think there's anything else really I have to say about this. I mean... You know, there there are tons of games that are coming out that, that that are going to rival them, and it's and it's gonna be it's gonna be a a rough time for them. I'm gonna be honest with with, with you. Like, if you work at Activision, your next five years might be looking pretty pretty bad, because like I mean, people are look people are turning to look at different games from indie developers that are better that are not only better done but also like willing to just you know fix glitches on time. Like, you know, 
there there were there were glitches and there were issues with the game that that just go on for way too too long and, and the fact that you know they're willing to release a skin for it is it just tells you everything you need to know and that's the problem is that we now at this point i can tell you exactly what's going to happen like this this uh this fully automatic shotgun if it is actually really broken that that they've just released they're going to make it they're going to make a skin for it they're going to make a skin or they're going to make a bundle for it. They got to pay like 20, but they realize they make more money on the bundle. So what, what they do is they, is, is they put the bundle of like skin. They'll probably do a, they'll probably do a boy skin with it. Some kind of boy skin variant. They'll put the boy skin in there. They'll put, um, the, uh, they'll put, they'll put the gun in there with some other gun that nobody cares about. And then they'll charge tw 25, 30, 30 bucks for it. So instead of just doing a weapon skin on two different guns or just the weapon skin where they can charge like five or ten bucks, they're going to make 25, 30 bucks on it. So, which, which is another thing I want to say. Um, I don't think I'll do a podcast episode about this, so I just want to say, say say this now. I personally think that the boys... Um, I, I like the boys show. It's it's funny as shit. I, it's great. I, I, I love the whole concept of having like, you know, the... Uh, essentially having like r-rated superheroes it's like you know if superman was actually superman in real life like that'd probably be exactly what he would do he'd probably just laser people's heads heads off but um the watching watching a homelander carry a gun or a pistol looks fucking stupid i'm i'm just gonna be honest with you so dumb dumbest thing ever i like how, how how they did the temp v and they make it so that you know you can like have superpowers or whatever else i first i thought i i, I thought it was a mod i actually had a video in my uh, and my, uh, my to do's here of to react to it, but like, you know, no, that's definitely, that's how it actually works. It's not, this is not a, this, this is not mods. I thought it was actually modding. I was going to be like, I was going to make a satire clip, but it is actually like, you can actually have laser vision with the boys integration. You can have laser vision with the boys integration. I was like, what the fuck? You can have super jumping. There's like a shockwave thing. They're kind of feeding off of their like older, uh, mechanisms though. The only thing that's new, I think is, um, is the laser beams. The laser beam is the only new uh, thing that they have. The the shockwave thing and the super jump, like you you had that ability in um in zombies. In the zombies in the zombie ro royale, you could jump super high. You could uh, shockwave things and like just dis like just dis disable vehicles and whatever else. So that was real. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, to me, I I think it's. I, I i i'm i'm not gonna shit on it it's it's actually kind of cool but you know i mean i think at this point warzone is trying to be like fortnite almost they're just trying to like get it they're trying to get to people before fortnite does like fortnite capitalized on marvel which was like at the time was a huge it still is it's still a huge franchise like the boys is growing i think still uh, a, lot of, a lot of people a lot of people gave the boys a bad review but it's not meant to be like this, like authentic, you know, superhero experience. The boys is meant to be like this fun, crazy, stupid thing. Like the title of the, of the show is called the boys. Like you're going to be doing some dumb shit with the boys. Like you're not going to be like creating like world peace with the boys. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just, to me, it's just, some people are just too harsh and just take things too, too literal. But uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I really do enjoy the boys and I hope that this collab is you know, they do something more with this collab, but, um, yeah, I mean, definitely the executions look, look, look really cool, but I, I but they also, they don't even do any emotes e either. That's, that's another thing too, that I was thinking about. They, they don't do any emotes like they, like call of duty used to do the emotes. They used to do like the cool emotes, like the zombie heads, like with, with the cold war integration, it was like so cool. Now they don't have any e emotes. I, I kind of looked at the store the other day while I was playing DMZ and I didn't see anything cool like as far as emotes. So it's like even even Fortnite is keeping up with that. Even Apex is keeping up with that. But I feel like there's a lot of lacking places here with Call of Duty that just need to be filled. And it's either they need, they need to hire more people that can do those jobs or they just need to fucking like focus on something and just go with it. I, I personally think that they should focus on DMZ and focus on, on the PvE route. I, I said this in my last week's po podcast episode, but... It's the truth. They really need to focus on something. Listen, if you watch this video this far, I would definitely be uh, subscribing. And uh, if you haven't already liked the video, it helps it out. Thank you very much and take care.